at any given time, I'm working on a dozen or so designs, ideas, concepts, evaluations. Design doesn't always come easy. Sometimes you gotta work on a project for a while, put it away, do a next version of it, and eventually I'll get to a place where I'm pretty happy with the results. Articulated fingers are one of those things I've been working on for a while, trying to perfect. When I'm making something, there's a couple things I like to keep in the back of my mind to help my development process. One is I like to make things out of readily available materials. I want to make things that are easier to build by people who are non-experts. And I want to make them inexpensive with a minimal amount of tools. I guess you could 3D print all of these things and maybe that's what we'll see here in the magic bag. But sometimes you feel like you're not making enough progress so you'll go in YouTube and maybe you can see a couple things. So there's a lot of good ideas out there. I don't want to copy anybody but sometimes it's good to get another person's perspective, buy it and see how they resolve some of the issues that you're having <laughs> in order to develop something that's kind of an offshoot of a success. I don't want to replicate any design down to the nuts and bolts or pieces, but I want to take ideas and concepts and kind of riff off of those and make something that's uniquely mine and then maybe somebody can take my designs and do the same. So here's the first version and a lot of this the challenge is not to get springs that are too tight getting this dimension down here, making it lightweight and wearable, comfortable. So then I wanted to make something that had a more mechanical feel to it. So I came up with this idea. This works pretty good. I was concerned that after I made this version that it would be too heavy. But after I drilled out all these holes, these two guys are within grams of each other. But I felt like I wasn't making enough progress. So I went online and I bought these. I'll post below where you can get a set of these, so maybe you'll like them better than mine. So before I open the box, and I haven't looked at this, all I did is open the bag. Let's go to a top-down shot so you can get a better view. Okay, so this is a Mapotad finger puppet articulation accessory a pair black made in China I know so let's get to it here okay, here's the two hands and they look pretty identical put the box to the side nice ziplock bag so we'll figure out one and then we'll do the other oh look at that Assembly required. So you get one, two, three, four, five. And we'll line them all up on the line here. And they are subtly different in size. From a learning perspective, looks like we have some gears going on there. But I want something that's going to be rugged and tough. PVC or metal. So we'll take a look at what we got here. Let's see, there's no gearing here. There's a gearing mechanism here. And that's connected how? Weird. Okay, so I guess your finger goes in here. So the action of your finger turns this gear and then all the other linkages make it happen. There's three sections. This is a wrist thing and you got some extra bungee. You have Little finger, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, thumb. The thumb is smallest. This is the wear frame. I don't think there's a right or left to these things. You just decide when you put this thing together. B3, C3, B3, let me guess, this is a C3? It's A3. Okay, so there is some distinctions here. 
After looking at it a little bit more, I've noticed that my thumb is bigger than my pinky. So I'm assuming that A3 is the thumb. Because this is smaller than all the other ones. These guys all look the same. This is C3, so I'm presuming that this is the pinky. Yeah, it fits on there fairly well. So pinky, thumb. That's an awful big thumb, and my thumb must be short because I get it all the way on and I have a little bit of trouble getting it in there up to here. Whereas the pinky finger, it's all the way into the top here and is quite easy. Yeah, everything else works fine. Thumb just seems a little bit big for me. I guess this would be the middle finger. Index finger. Okay. So, first impressions, it's plastic. And all the joints seem kind of lightweight. I'm a little concerned about things like this. Well, there's a little piece of plastic holding that in place. That seems to be a bit of a weak point in the design. So we'll put all these guys in here and see what we got. I have all the fingers connected now. Let's just put it on and explore the possibilities. I'm going to be thinking about how this all goes. I think it'd be challenging to get one hand on and then have to try to get the other hand on. All right, bring it down here. Did I do that right? Looks like I should have gone the other way. Well, let's put them on. And first of all, it's really tight. Maybe that's what you need. Comfort-wise, pretty good. They span, let's see how long they are. 10 inches on these guys, 9 inches on the thumb, and 9 inches on the pinky. The thumb seems a little loose and awkward. I might have to modify that somehow. I put it on from the top down, and I think you need to go underneath with these bands, so I'm actually going to reverse this when I make the other one, and we'll put them together and give you some thoughts. It's fun. It definitely works. There's a mechanical system on the first digit that does all the work and then the rest of it's just linkages. Down through here to this guy. This is just a pivot point. A mechanical linkage there. Huh. Wait a minute. Hold on. Interesting. Are those two connected? Are they survivable? Don't know. I'll put this guy together and then I'll show you both and give you some final thoughts. I'm always amazed that you buy something and the instructions are so basic and pictures help, but there's just not enough here. Definitely want to have the knots on the outside because it'll be more comfortable. Couple quick tips if you're going to get these. This is how I laid them out. So this is the thumb. On the left hand, this is the thumb on the right hand. I took a piece of red cloth hockey tape and put it on this one so I know red is right. And the knots are on the outside. So now we're going to try to put these guys on and I'll show you the full articulation. Alright, once you have one on, so advanced planning is key. I'm going to go just stick these guys on my fingers. You know, when you see the videos of other people, they don't show you putting them on. They've got to have somebody helping them. This is pretty difficult. And these are absolutely no help when it comes to putting the guys on your hands. All right, they're all on there. This guy's got to turn around a little bit. I'm kind of pushing them on here on the second hand. Thumb for some reason feels better. Maybe I have a different size thumb on the right hand. 
forcing my hand down. A third hand would be very helpful about now. Oi, caramba. All right, down. Wow, that was less than easy. And I'll see if we can get the other fingers on this one. One. You know, everybody makes this look easy. Two. All right, here we go. Visually very appealing. They look pretty evil. Thumbs need to be tightened. Index fingers are pretty good. Middle fingers are pretty good. Those fingers need to be tightened up a little bit. Something that amazes me on mass production pieces like this is little significant details that make a whole lot of difference. In other words, this is all pretty good. This could be cleaned up a little bit, of course, and that's not a big deal. Right here, that's the fatal flaw. This little piece of plastic on each one of these, on each side, right here, that's going to fail. From a human factor standpoint, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever why you couldn't have just made this thing with a little extra plastic that goes around here. You could make it made it real big, almost like a hubcap compared to what it is there. You can make it a quarter inch more, half, you know, five millimeters more, and that would have strengthened this whole design, made it so much better. But for some reason, it wasn't done like that. So when I update my designs, I'm gonna incorporate super strong beefiness. Such a shame. You know, if you look at the comments on this thing, and I didn't understand them until I actually bought one, this little piece here fails on so many different occasions. And you can return this within 30 days, so if the chances of you break one of these things is pretty high. Now, I'm probably gonna hold on to this piece, first of all, because I like it mechanically. But why? Why would you design something that would have such an obvious flaw point? On one hand, you have 10 possible failure points. Major failure points at that. And then people are going to send them back. Or they're not going to be happy. Just don't understand that whatsoever. In comparison to my design, very eloquent. It's got a gearing mechanism in there. Mine is kind of clunky. But this thing is not going to break. You're going to be able to beat this up against a wall. You might crack this little plastic piece here. This metal's not going to give in. This hinge isn't going to give in. I'll tell you what those hinges are later. This isn't going to break. You might, depending on how hard you beat it, snap off one of these eyes. That's always a possibility. So these are more ruggedized, but I can see some things in this design that I plan to incorporate into my designs. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in designs of all kinds, evaluation of sports gear, costumes, mechanical systems, I do home repairs, sports gear development, electronics, and as you can see, cosplay, costumes, and props. If you're interested in any of those things, check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.